So I've started to get responses. What's the process for evaluating an RFX? When evaluating responses to the RFX, there's a sequence that you should follow. Check responses are compliant with all mandatory requirements and have been received by the due date and time. You'll then need to evaluate each. If it's a large-scale bid, you'll need to use a team and a template will be essential. Subject matter experts will provide a technical analysis. What about the total cost of ownership? Consider that next. The cheapest upfront price is not always the best long-term outcome. Validate the objectives of the sourcing strategy and confirm if they've been met. Is the proposal more cost effective than the current arrangement or does it offer innovative solutions for competitive advantage? Check the risks associated with the bids. Shortlist if you want to consider only a few, otherwise continue with all. Decide if site visits will help your team better evaluate a supplier. If you visit one, you should visit them all. Reference checks. It's about finding out the truth. Can suppliers do what they say? Conduct thorough reference checks on other customers that are like you. And each time a supplier is removed from consideration, keep records of your reasons why. This can help to maintain good reputation and ensures probity in the process. Finally, you can shortlist suppliers for negotiations or go to award the contract. A numbering system can be a helpful model during the evaluation process. You can use it to score and weight each RFX response. First, you need to determine your selection criteria. Create a list of key criteria, things like quality, cost, service, delivery and risk. Of course, the criteria needs to be specific to your requirements and you should get your stakeholders input. You need to be consistent, so create a template for the evaluation team to use for each contract. To apply weightings, ask if criteria X is more important than criteria Y, with a 1 for yes and a 0 for no. Add a factor of one to each criteria, then calculate totals and divide by the sum total. You can ask each member of the evaluation team to do this and then average the results. Then we are ready to go through the evaluation process. Right. Ensure you've asked the right questions in your RFX and be clear on which questions relate to which criteria. For each question, define what response does not meet requirements, what response does and what response exceeds requirements. Remember, this should be agreed beforehand with the right people. This means your stakeholders and the evaluation team. To make it easy, create a template for the evaluation team with clear instructions. This could be as simple as for each question number, put zero if does not meet requirements, one if meets requirements, and two if exceeds requirements. Okay, well that sounds simple, but what if one of my stakeholders holds bias? The evaluation process needs to be carried out by several different people to mitigate that risk. You can make it anonymous so that any one team member can submit their scores to you without feeling they have to agree with the others. The name of suppliers could also be removed for the same reason of potential bias. Results of the evaluation are not necessarily the final decision. Both internal and external discussions can be ongoing. You might ask, did the supplier give their best offer? These types of questions can be addressed during negotiations. Remember, be clear and upfront about your requirements and intentions to negotiate. It's only fair and it can help avoid potential issues. After you've evaluated, negotiated and finalised, it is good practice to offer to debrief unsuccessful suppliers. It will be helpful for any future dialogue. Also, if you don't do this, how do you expect them to improve? It's usually in your best interest if they're a better contender next time. You'll get better responses and possibly greater potential value. So how long should the RFX process take? For large tenders, a project plan is vital. Don't assume stakeholders will be able to drop everything and work full time on it. So allow for other responsibilities and possible distractions. If you have bidders expecting a response, but you lack support in the evaluation process, you might find yourself in a standstill situation. So make sure the appropriate resources are in place to deal with it. And you've left some contingency in time. You can get this timing right by asking, is there a business driver for getting the requirement in place? Are your stakeholders already committed to events on certain dates? Are the potential suppliers prepared for your timeframes? And are the timeframes too long, making suppliers lose focus and give no priority, or too short so they don't have enough time to respond? So an RFX is focused on seeking the best outcome from the best supplier. And to achieve this, it is key to have input from the right people when putting it together and evaluating the responses. That can mean key stakeholders, evaluation team members, relevant management and potential suppliers, but at different stages and with varying levels of involvement. 